Before getting ordained, I was very much afraid of the responsibility that involves to be a priest, of giving consolation to people and, and helping them when they are in the struggles. In the moment of the ordination, when the bishop invokes the Holy Spirit, I see that this is a ministry of the Lord. In a way, we are called like the John the Baptist, to say, I am the friend of the bridegroom, and I am just here to witness how the bridegroom works. And this is how I am fulfilling my ministry, to see how the Lord gives lives to His people. Well, I come from Spain, from Granada, which is in the southeast of Spain. And I come from a Catholic family. We used to practice, uh, go every Sunday to Mass. Uh, but something marked me when I was a child. I, uh, I didn't understand why my father had to be hospitalized many times. Uh, we were left alone, my brother and I. And this went on for a few years. Then, when I was almost 12, my father passed away, and that I couldn't understand. I was very small, and I thought, uh, God is not just. Uh, everybody was telling me, you know, God is love, God will take care of you. But deep in my heart, I had a lot of hate against God. I say, how come you take my father from me? And, and so that brought me to, to a state of uh, rebelliousness, and slowly I, I expressed that rebelliousness uh, with my mother. I was very disrespectful. With my brother, I had a lot of issues because I thought that he wanted to take the place of my father, that he was, wanted to tell me what to do. I couldn't accept. I basically had a lot of issues against uh, any authority, against teachers, against anybody who wanted to guide me. And I thought that the, uh, the way of solving, getting away from these issues was now I guide my life. Now I, want, I am the one that is going to do whatever I want. So I started going to, to nightclubs, uh, getting drunk, uh, listening to music that is goth, that is against God, dressing in black and trying to find also girls, uh, to find pleasure in, in that. When I was doing that, I was empty. So that made me feel even more angry. I came for me also a feeling of uh, loneliness, like those who I thought that was my friends, we were going out to party. I saw that I was suffering, but I didn't feel that there was no connection, that I was suffering alone. And, and that brought me to close myself more down. And then when I was uh, 19, my mother had joined a group in the church that is called Neocatechumenal Way, which is a, a charism in the church to rediscover our faith. So she was going, and this was helping her to cope with me and my brother. And then one friend of my mom, she was in the house, and she saw how I was struggling, and I was empty, and she, she told me, listen, if you are looking for a nice relationship with a girl, I am going to tell you of a place where you can find a, a lasting relationship, somebody that cares for you. So she invited me to a series of talks in my home parish. Uh, so I went, I didn't go to, to listen to God. I went looking for where are these precious girls. But this is how God hooked me, because otherwise somebody would have told me, come to church, I would have said no. So I went, I joined this uh, group, this community, which are lay fifth people from different uh, ages, and I was going. So I was going once a week to the liturgy of the Eucharist and also to celebrate the Word. But I was still doing my, my life. I will go to the Eucharist and then go to discos. Uh, but 
I didn't want to change at that moment. I wanted to, to, to continue with this life. But I found that in this community with couples, with older people, with young people, that when I was myself, I was uh, opening up and sharing what I was struggling, I was discovering something new, that they would be praying for me, that I would just maybe get angry and they will accept, they will... So I found that slowly was touching me because then I felt that I wasn't anymore alone. But I, wa I was continuing with this type of life and when I was 22, I entered into a very strong depression and I was asking, what is the meaning of everything that I am doing? I find that there is no meaning, that I was just find emptiness. So I became very, very, very uh, close in myself. And I say, well, the, the, the one that is uh, making me stay like this is God. So I was planning that I wanted to harm God in a way. God cannot harm me, but I, was, I wanted to end up this suffering, this emptiness. And I thought that the way of doing it is by, by ending up my life. So I would have been a few months without talking to anybody, completely depressed. And I already gave up my life. I didn't want to live anymore. And it's in that moment that I saw the hand of God, Jesus Christ, coming down to me. And all this word, this, this Eucharist that I was attending, I see that the Holy Spirit was already reaching out. One day uh, before Christmas, I was walking in the street and I felt the, the urge, the Holy Spirit uh, asking me, why you don't enter in the confessional and confess? And I was at the beginning, I was a bit afraid because I haven't gone for a, for a few years to confession. And I was scared that if I will open up what I was thinking, the priest was going to scold me and say, go home and we don't, we don't want people like this. So I started opening up and by my surprise, the priest told me something that uh, pierced my heart. That he says, you know, God loves you. God understands what you are going through and he forgives you. So that for me really touched my heart because I wasn't seeing possible that God could love me, could forgive me in the way that I have been acting. So I really believe that in that forgiveness and that changed my life. I saw that I came out from that confessional as a recent person, as if somebody has given me, has given me my life back. So I felt that the need to, to continue feeling that love, experiencing this mercy. So I started with Anuali telling me, I started going every day to Mass, and I started praying the liturgy of the hours. I didn't know even what was that. I started uh, going into the scriptures, and every time that I will open the Bible, I was touched by this passage of the Lord calling the disciples, like, come and follow me, and uh, by the miraculous catch of fish. Uh, the Lord will say, throw your net, and he will catch fish, and the Lord will send him, come, and, and I will make you fishers of men. So that passage uh, touched me, and, and I was feeling called to be a priest. But I was afraid because I say, I, I, don't, I don't feel capable to be a priest. I want to get married. So I had a lot of uh, f um, kind of doubts to accept this call. And I, 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 but I saw that every time that I will go to the scripture, that passage will come out. So at the end I say, Lord, if you call me to this, you have given me back my life. So I offer my life to whatever you want to do with me. So in that moment, I say, God, if you want me to be a priest, uh, to announce what I have received, here I am, I am ready.
In the one of the World Youth Days in Paris with Pope John Paul II, uh, he made uh, a very strong appeal to follow the Lord, and, and that touched me. So after the, the World Youth Day, we have en uh, vocational uh, meetings where they are asked to us, so whoever wants to feel that the Lord is calling for the priesthood or for the relig religious life, we normally go to the stage and we get a blessing from the, from the bishops and the cardinals that are there. So I went in front and one of the bishops blessed me and I felt a peace that was incredible. And then I started going for one year to the pre-vocational meeting to see if this call, to verify this call. So after one year, I was sent to a retreat in Italy where all the young people that they want to enter the priesthood from the neocatechumenal way, they are gathered. So we were gathered 300 young people from all over the world. And in this uh, retreat, they ask us one question. Are you willing to go wherever the Lord sends you? So I was very much afraid because I never left home. I was like mama's boy and I was kind of, but I say, Lord, you call me, I go. So I put my name, I wrote it down and I put it in a basket. And on Sunday afternoon, we just have a draw and we go wherever we are drawn. So we were drawn and I was drawn to Toronto. So I was just surprised, what is Toronto? I, I never heard of that. Then I discovered that I was in Canada. So I went back to Spain, I did the papers and I came here in January 1999 to Toronto. And when I came, it was minus 30. It was very, very cold. There was one meter of snow in the streets. I never have been so much snow in my life. Then I started three days after, I started going to university to study philosophy and I couldn't understand anything. So after a few weeks, I went to the rector and I said, I want to leave. I don't want to be here. I don't understand anything. I, I don't know what I'm doing here, so I want to go back home. So something that helped me is to, he told me, you know, be patient, the Lord will help you. Be patient, God will provide. And I said, okay, let's try. I saw once in my life this, so I said, okay, he will do it. And slowly, I see that the Lord really provided. I had an, a group of also of people that they were with me, that, so that is slowly the English came about, the adaptation here. So before the ordination, I remember that I was with a bit of a, a lot of struggles. And the rector, he called me, he said, listen, we have thought for you to, to be ordained. We are going to propose to the cardinal and next month we are going to be ordained. So I just told him, listen, I don't know if I am ready. For me, I feel that this is too much. It's a big responsibility. So he told me something to confirm, that is, you know, do you believe in the discernment of the church? Because we see that you are called. So I trusted in the, in the discernment of the church. So even though there are moments that I don't, I feel overwhelmed, or I feel I see that the Holy Spirit is there to confirm, to console, and also the prayers of the faithful, of the people, and also the Virgin Mary. She has been since the beginning a big part in consoling and helping me in this vocation. So all this, just to tell you that is not mine. This is the work of God, and I have just said yes to it, and the Lord has been really fulfilling my life. Pope Francis calls us to be missionary disciples, and in particular to his priests, to go out to the periphery, to meet people and encounter them, bringing them closer to Christ. So much so of being a shepherd that they actually take on the scent of the sheep themselves. Today we have a beautiful episode of Vocare with Father Francisco Siles. He's the associate pastor 
from St. John the Evangelist Parish from Whitby, Ontario. Father, you truly live out this call of being the shepherd to the flock by going out you know, into the peripheries and really, um, you know, being this shepherd among your flock. Can you share a little bit about your ministry work that you do? Well, since I came here, and, uh, I am also in charge of the Spanish uh, faithful all over Durham area. So when I came, uh, this community was very small because they haven't had a permanent priest with them. So since I have come uh, in here a few months ago, I, I was asking God to help me to open ways of reaching them because I see that they are moving around in, and coming here to live. So I asked God to open ways and roads how to meet them. So he gave me the, the seal to, to go around uh, into, the, into the restaurants, into the markets, to kind of make this word spread that there is a mass here. And slowly the people have been coming uh, to mass. And I see that it's necessary to go out, to reach them, to make ourselves available. So one gift that the Lord has, has given is to, to be able to work with the migrant workers. There are a hundred uh, migrant workers from Guatemala that they live close by. So through a parishioner here, we have made connection. And I have just started a, a kind of a Bible course that is an announcement of the good news. To see that, the, that in their sufferings, the Lord knows what they are going through and He wants to give them hope. And, and these people have been very touched. And also people have been calling when they heard about the Spanish Mass to do uh, house blessings and to do... And one of these house blessings I went to bless the house of these people and they, after they, uh, I offered them if they wanted to get married because they have been living together for 25 years and they were very, very happy. And, and so in that sense, I see that the Lord, this ministry, the Lord uh, is still surprising me. So I don't know how it will, it will go ahead, but I see that people, they need to see that uh, Jesus Christ goes to meet them where they are at. So in that sense, uh, every day is a surprise of how the Lord is going to use me to, to reach to, the, to His people. All right, and it's so beautiful, Father, because you really are like the shepherd that goes out to find the lost sheep. I mean, literally, you do that. Um, and you shared some examples. Can you just share one of your incidences of really someone being lost and you bringing them back to Christ? So normally, as part of uh, what I do in the parish, I, every day I go for a walk. It's necessary also for me. And when I do the walk, I normally have the rosary in my hands, and people there are not used to see priests around in the street and all that. So many people, they kind of stare and all that. So one of these, there was a Sunday, I was going, and I was just going very close to a Tim Hortons that we have in Dundas Street. It's a coffee shop, yeah. If I go, it's a coffee shop. So there was just a kind of a, somebody, that I, they would look a bit kind of uh, in anguish. So he just passed me very fast and he looked very angry. So then, after a few hundred meters, he turned and I was afraid. I said, well, that he's now going to, because I am a priest, I represent the church, he's going to say something against the church. That, but I, saw, I was surprised that this person, he says, Father, do you have time to hear my confession? So I was just mind blown and I, and I say, well, if you want, we can do it here in the middle of the street. So I was very glad that uh, this person having been to confession in years, and I saw how at the end this person went off with such a peace. So I see for me what uh, helps me a lot is that the God can use the ministry 24 hours anywhere. And this for me is a, is a consolation. That's beautiful, Father, how you truly, you know, even those who are lost, you know, God will use you in such an incredible way. Um, for those, you know, your story, when you're sharing your discernment story, um, for those, 
you know, men that are maybe discerning the priesthood and they might have some fear or not, they're not certain about um, this call. Because all of, you know, all of us might, might feel that we they need to be equipped with something or, and God gives, you know, calls those and he equips those that he calls really, right? That's how the saying goes. Um, can you share a little bit about yourself and, and your journey of not being really fully ready, but God called you to this, uh, to your vocation? It was, at the beginning I was, before getting ordained, I was very much afraid of the responsibility that involves to be a priest, of giving consolation to people and, and helping them when they are in the struggles. But I see that the, in the moment of the ordination, when the, when the bishop invokes the Holy Spirit, I see that this is a ministry of the Lord, that many times we think that is our ministry, what I can do, how, how I can talk to people, how I can reach. And I think that this is a ministry of Jesus, that He works through, through us. And I have seen it in me, that uh, people are rich, and I just he uh, uh, offer myself, and at the end it's, it's Jesus the one who does everything. And, and He put the words how to speak to certain people and how to reach to people. And I see that at the end, not to be afraid of what it involves, because at the end, Jesus Christ gives the Holy Spirit and, and helps in a way that we cannot imagine. So I think that we are just instruments that the Lord uses to give life to His people. So in a way, not to be afraid of what it can entail, but that there is after, uh, for me, I am witness in my ministry of what the Lord can do with His people. So I get every time amazed at, at how He can give life to people. So I am just, in a way, we are called like the John the Baptist, to say I am the friend of the bridegroom. And I am just here to witness how the bridegroom works. And this is how I am fulfilling my ministry, to see how the Lord gives lives to His people. And that's incredible. This is fulfilling. So beautiful, Father. And you know, another thing that's uh, really striking about you, you have this community building. Mm -hmm. And also as a lay person myself, like my responsibility as well, I mean, you come out to serve me as a lay person, mm -hmm. but also that should be reciprocated from my end as a lay person as well. Can you just share about that relationship you have with the people? And Yes, well, I think that the life of a priest is uh, we are shepherd of a community and we are the head of the community, but a head without a community, is it doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere. We need the community and the community needs us. So for me, something that helps me in my ministry is to, to go to the houses of the people. And even I, have a, I am part of a community of lay people where I know that they pray for me. I can open up my own struggles and they can share with me their struggles. I can share with them their struggles. And they understand that a priest, before being a priest, is a, is a fellow brother. So like this, I see that it's important for any priest, for any people, to live the faith in community, where we have uh, the same struggles, where we can pray for each other, when we can support each other. So I think that for me personally, it will be impossible to, to live as a priest with a community, without a community behind. Also, I have the support of my community back home, where they pray for me when I speak and tell them about my struggles. And I see that this is essential for my priesthood, that I am part of a community. So whenever I go to minister, I am sent as a representative also of the community. Right. And this is also, you know, for myself, like a lesson that I have to pray for you as much uh -huh. as you have to pr you pray for me, right? Because we kind of um, overlook the fact that we all always want the priest to pray for us, but yes. the, the need of praying for our beloved priests as well, yes. to be holy, loving priests that yes. serve us and really you've laid yes. your life down for each and every one of us. And we yes. thank you for that, Father. Yes, especially we need to see that the priests 
Uh, they have their own struggles. Many times they feel lonely. They have been giving, giving, giving. They give homilies, they give the sacraments. But it's very important that the priests also receive. They cannot give what they don't receive. So they need also to receive uh, from the people support and prayers. And also that the priest, uh, even me, is not that we, we have arrived in the maturity of faith. We also are growing. And we grow through the experiences of couples, of youth, of older people. We need to receive also the testimony of faith of the people. So it's a, a common support. And in that sense, it's very important uh, not to leave the priest alone in their struggle, but to pray for them, to support them, to be there for them. Well, if you are uh, called to the priesthood, you think that God is calling you. I invite you not to be afraid, because at times we think that uh, it is a lot what God is asking for us. We don't know how we can make it. I invite you that if God is calling you, He is going to give you the graces to, to fulfill this ministry. And He's going to give you a life that you don't imagine, eh? to spread uh, his good news, to give life to people, eh? Christ wants to do through you. And also this cannot be without the help of the lay people. So for the lay people, those uh, couples, young people, older people, single people, I invite you to, to pray for vocations, to pray for the priests, to support them. Because without your prayers, we cannot do this by ourselves. We need your support. So I, with that, I invite you to, to pray, offer even your sufferings, your, your struggles, offer it for vocations. Because the church needs priests to continue the mission of Jesus Christ. And we are here as priests to serve you, to serve the people of God. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace, proclaiming the good news wherever you are. God bless you. I'm very happy to present my greetings to Shalom Ministry and all the good work that you do around the world in fulfilling the dream of the Holy Father that all should hear the love of God. Thank you for your good work and those who support you. May these special days of new evangelization bless your operators, your administrators, and your benefactors. God bless you. Shalom World, God's own channel.